Hi folks, I'm trying finally to make an effort to catch up. I just finished going through your lesson plan analysis number one because I wanted you to have feedback on that before you move on to lesson plan <coughs> analysis two, excuse me. So I noticed that about half of you did that really well, lesson plan analysis one, and about half of you struggled with it. So I think the difference maker is whether or not you're actually going through the pages of the modules rather than jumping right to the, the assignment description. So I really want you to take a minute to slow down and take a look at these lesson plan analyses because if you do them correctly, they're extremely valuable. They allow you to take this abstract vocabulary, I mean, if we're talking in Piaget's terms, these formal operational ideas, and make them more concrete by actually looking for them within your own lesson plans or the lesson plan I've provided or a, a lesson plan you found online. Okay, so I'm not seeing a lot of you. In fact, I don't know that anybody used the sample lesson plan I provided. That's okay. Um, but I did notice a lot of you didn't quite follow what you were supposed to do. So let me show you. And of course, you can redo. My class, everything can be redone because this is a learning experience. And I want to make sure that you really get how you can use this stuff to help your kids be successful in your class. So watch my screen here as I take you through where you can find the information you need for these lesson plan analyses. All right, if we go to the modules area, what I noticed a lot of you did was you took, if we scroll down a bit here, you took my example that I went through, this lesson plan analysis demonstration. You took what I did in that and applied the exact same vocabulary in lesson plan analysis one. This was just a demonstration to show you how to do the analysis, not the concepts that we were to be addressed. If you scroll down, keep coming down, lesson four, right? This is the lesson we're in right now. And if you come down here to Piaget, application in the secondary classroom. So remember, as you go through the lessons in this class, you should be marching through page by page. If you just jump to the lesson plan analysis assignment, I'll show you what you'll find. Um, it basically just says annotate the lesson plan and then write, reflect on these questions. Okay, if you skip back a page, it actually says in there, take a look at the instructions in, in lesson four. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, sorry, I'm gonna jump back into modules so you can see where I am so you don't get lost. I'm in lesson four, application in the secondary classroom. So I always explain assignments on the page before the submission because if you're going through the modules, I wanna give you good detailed explanations, okay? So if you come down here, there's a link to the lesson plan library and there's a sample lesson plan right there that you're welcome to use for these analyses. Many of you went out and found lesson plans online or used ones that you'd written yourself and that is awesome. So you can use this one if you need it but you don't have to. Now it says follow the model provided at the end of lesson three to annotate your lesson plan. So the way I did it but using Piaget's theory. You've got to use terms like concrete operations and disequilibrium and assimilation and all that good stuff, okay? So here's what I'm looking for. Look through your lesson plan and look for whether the instruction is targeted more toward concrete or formal operations. Show me, using those comments, where it's concrete. Show me where it's formal. And then, how is the teacher facilitating adaptation? I can't see into the kids' heads, so I don't know if they're assimilating or accommodating. But I do know in my lesson plan if there's a moment that's going to cause disequilibrium, a time when I'm introducing something new. So there's this cognitive imbalance where they're going, wait, how do I process this information? And then, what am I doing in the lesson plan to help them assimilate? What I would look for there are times in the lesson plan when I'm connecting to prior knowledge or where I'm asking them to think about when they have experienced this or what they already know about this. So that's assimilation when we're tying it into things they already know, their existing schema. 
And then accommodation, I saw many of you misuse this term, not many, a few, um, but it's easy to do. If you've taken exceptional students, then you know this word accommodation can mean something different. You've got to make sure you're using the term accommodation in Piaget's sense of the term. So accommodation here should be an, a kind of helping the students to change their existing ideas or expand or to learn something new. So what kinds of strategies are you using within your lesson plan to help students develop new ideas, new ways of thinking, uh, new understandings? That's accommodation. Assimilation is connecting it to their old understandings. Accommodation is building new understandings. And the strategies we use to do these things can be concrete, meaning they're giving students real actual experience, we're showing them visuals, we're doing hands-on things, or they can be formal. We're asking them to think abstractly or hypothetically through discussion or questioning or something like that. Okay, so that's really what I'm looking for. And the more vocabulary you can use from the theory, the better. Using terms like classification and conservation, um, using things like hypothetical deductive reasoning. I know these are crazy big words, but if you're going through and you're using the study guides or taking notes using the vocabulary, that's what I'm looking for. Not because I'm obsessed with vocab, because I kind of hate it, but actually because using that vocab in the context of your lesson plan, pointing out, oh look, here's a moment of disequilibrium because the students aren't gonna get this. Then that's gonna help you apply and understand these theories so you know how to use them in your classroom with your students. Then at the end of the lesson plan, reflect on it. Make sure you stick to the theory though. I have lots of reflections that say things like, I think this is a great lesson. It gets the kids up and moving and they're having fun. Tie it back to Piaget's theory. Piaget advocates for an active learning environment, hands-on experience for students, you know, those kinds of things. So the whole lesson plan analysis should be focused on Piaget's theory. Now, what I could tell was a lot of you didn't see this right here. Here is an example of a lesson plan analysis one. So if I click on that and I open up this example, sorry, I've got another document here. Give it a sec. Here we go. Then you can see how this student went through and he's saying, oh, this right here, this activity, it's gonna help students assimilate with stuff they already know. Okay, this right here, they're gonna to have to use formal operations as they think about how this is gonna work. It's hypothetical, okay? All right, here, students are gonna to have to accommodate. I'm gonna help them accommodate by getting them to do these specific things. Right, so there are these comments using the vocabulary from the theory talking about what's going on in the lesson plan. And then as we come down to the end, you can see his use of Piaget's theory in talking about these strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so many of you in this case, I would suggest that you redo this assignment. I hope that's not punitive. I hope you understand that I'm coming from a place of trying to help you really get these concepts and apply them and use them in your classroom, okay? A gentle nudge and reminder to please go through the pages of the lesson. Don't just skip to the assignment descriptions um, because you're gonna miss some valuable stuff. That doesn't mean you have to look at every single resource or every single video, but it does mean that you should really have a firm grasp of the concepts that are presented in the lesson using the study guide, um, especially when you see this check mark. That's why I've put these in here. They're roadblocks, right, that say, oh, here's an assignment, I better stop and really read this thoroughly. So the lesson plan analyses, their purpose is to lead up to your tipper responses. So we should be working on these tipper responses gradually, right? So if you can find Piaget's theory in a lesson plan, that's going to make it so much easier for you than to notice how your cooperating teacher is using concrete or formal operational strategies. What moments in the cooperating teacher's instruction cause disequilibrium? How the cooperating teacher is helping students assimilate by connecting to what they already know? And then what strategies the teacher is using to help the students accommodate the new stuff? Okay, so that's the progression we're looking for here. Let's go through the lessons. Let's use the study guides or your notes, those videos, all that good stuff to get an understanding of the vocabulary and what the gist of the theory is. 
then let's take it to a lesson plan where it's nice and safe and use that to kind of build our understanding of how we'd use this to teach then go out and do your field experience and see how it's actually being applied in a classroom, whether the teacher knows he or she is doing it or not. Okay? So, again, this is vital stuff. This is taking it from the realm of the abstract, stupid, nasty theory stuff and saying, how can I use this to help that kid in my classroom that's struggling. So that's why I'm urging you to redo this assignment if you're not satisfied with your score or if you feel like you did it incorrectly. Um, and if there's a way that I could make this clearer, please let me know. I feel like the hang up is just that maybe we didn't get to this part of this page of the lesson, but if there's something somewhere that makes it look like you're supposed to use the same vocabulary or that makes it unclear of how you're supposed to do this, please let me know uh, so that I can fix that for you. I am your teacher. I've designed these lessons myself, so when there are errors, I really want to know about it because I am so passionate about this subject and I want to help you understand it. Okay, now jumping out, I know this is going to get a little wordy, um, just making sure that you're on track for this week. I'm sorry, I'm a couple days behind, still recovering from this nasty cold thing. Um, this week, you should be finishing up lesson four, right? So you should be working on Vygotsky's sociocultural theory right now. Man, this is a powerful theory. If we use Piaget and Vygotsky together, it helps us so beautifully understand how thinking develops across a student's life. Yes, there's biology concerned, as Piaget tells us. Yes, it's about individual experiences and active learning and about moving through stages. Sure, it's about those things. But it's also so profoundly impacted by our society and our culture. And that means that every student is going to come into our classroom at a different level of understanding. And they're going to need different levels of support or what we call scaffolding or assisted learning as they engage with us in trying to develop their ability to think about these concepts we're teaching them in class. So that's what Vygotsky's theory tells us is that there are these different zones of proximal development. We've got to provide different amounts of scaffolding for each student, those kinds of things because of the society and culture they're coming from. And then as we go forward and we move about differentiation, which is a concept you should have learned about in your curriculum class too, we start to think about, well, how would I differentiate my instruction for these different levels of readiness, these different zones of proximal development? Readiness and ZPD, they're the same thing, okay? So how would I alter my instruction to adapt for that? I did this today in my class. I, I hate that I don't get to see you face to face and do this with you. But for example, I gave my students, <coughs> excuse me, a pre-assessment today. And then based on the results of that pre-assessment, whether they knew nothing about what we were talking about, a little bit or a lot, they did different tasks in class. The people that knew nothing, they defined terms and made sure they got the basics. The people that knew a little bit expanded on that and came up with some examples. And the people that knew a lot analyzed the effects of what we were learning about on a classroom environment. But the beauty of it is with differentiation, we don't walk away right there. We don't say, okay, the lower level learners are still low level learners. Instead, we say, let's everybody share and enhance our understanding so that everybody gets the same stuff. So those people that defined the terms, they presented those definitions in a variety of ways, visual, kinesthetic, um, kind of dramatic, they did some interesting things, um, to show everybody what those terms really meant and everybody was taking definite or notes about that and then the people who are coming up with examples they shared those examples with everybody so everybody got what that theory actually meant in practice and then the people that were you know kind of the accelerated learners for the day they took those concepts and said, how am I going to use this as a teacher? And they shared that with everybody. So everybody walked away with an understanding of what the vocab meant, what some examples of it were, and how you'd actually use it to help students in a classroom. That's the goal of differentiation. Not to leave everybody at the same level, but to use these zones of proximal development and different amounts of scaffolding to bring everybody to the same place, to bring everybody up higher than they were before. Okay? 
So that's what we're learning about with Vygotsky and with differentiation. Then as you go into lesson plan analysis two, and that's why I wanted to get you feedback on lesson plan analysis one, so you'd know how to do two correctly, you're going to take a look at a lesson plan. It can be the same one, or if you want, it can be a different one. And you're going to look for Vygotsky's theory this time. So go through the lesson plan and comment where in the lesson plan does the teacher determine the student's zone is a proximal development. If the teacher doesn't do that, there could be a problem there, right? What types of scaffolding are being provided within the lesson plan? Are there worksheets? Are there guided notes? Is the teacher going around and helping? Is there questioning that's taking place? What kinds of supports for learning is the teacher providing? How are they differentiating for readiness? Not learning style or profile, not emotion, right? You guys have learned a lot of different ways we can differentiate. We're looking specifically here at readiness. <clears throat> so how is the teacher taking the information about the zones of proximal development, understanding that there are lower level, mid-level, higher level learners within a classroom and providing different levels of scaffolding or different experiences, having uh, accelerated learners help struggling learners, those kinds of things. That's differentiating for readiness. How is grouping being used? Who's acting as the more knowledgeable other? Is it the teacher the whole time or do students get to play that role here and there? Okay, so that's what you're going to look for in lesson plan analysis too. Commenting throughout the lesson plan as you see examples of these and other concepts from Vygotsky's theory. For example, are cultural tools being used in that lesson plan? Okay, then at the end, reflecting. Okay, now, overall, looking at this lesson plan, what are its strengths with regard to Piaget? Or <laughs> what are its strengths with regard to Vygotsky? And then what are its weaknesses? And how would we fix it using Vygotsky's theory? Okay, these are new assignments, these lesson plan analyses. I don't want you to feel bad about not doing it correctly because this is how we learn, right? Mistakes help us learn. So it's great. I know you don't think it's great because you have to do more work. But doing it again, if you need to, is going to help you really expand your understanding of the theory and of lesson planning and how psychology actually does play a role or should in how we teach kids. So go back and fix that lesson plan analysis one. Make sure you go through the materials if you didn't already on Piaget. Make sure you go through the materials on Vygotsky and differentiation and then do this lesson plan analysis too. Now the other thing that you have, if you want to do it, is an extra credit opportunity. Let me scroll back here, sorry I went too far. So we've got this schooling the world opportunity and I've heard one of the videos is broken so I'm gonna send out a, a new link for you, okay? Um, ooh, that's not the link I wanted. Let me go next. Oh, one of the pages is broken. The link is broken, so I will fix that for you. Um, but there is an opportunity to watch this Schooling the World documentary. So I'll make sure that's up where you need it. And then just in this discussion board here, answering these questions about the documentary, how you felt about it, and how it ties in with Vygotsky's theory. So this is totally extra credit. Do it if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but I think it's a really fascinating way of looking at the role of society and culture in what education means and in the development of thinking. Um, and it may or may not give you a slight existential crisis about whether or not you should be a teacher. So there. All right, so that's what we have. Ready? I'm going to recap so that you know where we are. Okay, we're in lesson four. If you need to, redo lesson plan analysis one. You need to do lesson plan analysis two, making sure you do that correctly. And then you have the option of the schooling the world extra credit. Okay. Um, I will get you feedback. Again, I'm catching up after having been sick, but I'll get you feedback on your assessment inventory items. Once I do that, you have a good week or so to get me revisions on those uh, so that you can learn from my feedback and uh, up your score if you so choose. Okay, so that's what we have going on right now. It's a little bit of a catch-up period for all of us uh, before we move into one of my absolute favorite topics. Uh, all of the topics in my class are kind of my absolute favorites, but identity development. I mean, that's why I'm a secondary teacher. Little kids are fine, but secondary kids, we get to help them figure out who they are. 
and what their purpose is in life and what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And I just get excited thinking about it. So we get to learn a little bit about what that looks like and how we can help. Okay, that's where we are. Please come and find me if you have questions. Um, again, we have our midterm exam coming up on March 11th with a meeting at 3 p.m. A few of you have contacted me to say you can't make that, so we'll we'll figure out an alternative for you. Uh, but the rest of you, I really look forward to seeing you and interacting with you for this midterm experience on the 11th. All right. I love you, darlings. I'll talk to you later.